Yeah, this is Postulus Maximus, and you're listening to Rock and Radio. Postulus Maximus. Oh, yeah. What's happening, brother? <laughs> how are you? Ah, uh, terrible, but that's okay. It's just, that's how it normally is. <laughs> Where are you calling from? Richmond, Virginia, actually. Wow, Virginia. Well, I'm here in Kingston in Ontario, Canada. Oh, man, I'm sorry. You're, you're in America's 51st state. <laughs> Let me tell you, Postulus. I listened to your new EP, The This With No Name, and congratulations. Ah, oh, well, thank you. You're very welcome. The Black version are fantastic. How the idea come up to record an acoustic EP, Postulus? Well, you know, with things got very strange during the COVID times. You know, we went mm -hmm. on, uh, with, since touring ceased to happen in 2020, you know, we went on uh, in a lot of our separate ways. You know, some of the band members got jobs at Burger King and some of us went on like a spirit quest <laughs> and then came back high as shit. Okay. And, you know, so then when we all got home, we wanted to rehearse and nobody paid the electric bill. So we had to play acoustically for a couple of months. <laughs> you know, there was no, in, there was no money coming in from no tours. So, you know, once we, once we rehearsed for a while, we thought, Hey, this actually sounds pretty good. Okay. And, uh, We wanted, we wanted to release it to the public and see what everybody else thinks. Well, in my opinion, you did a good job because our classic songs, um, the, the result of everything was great. And maybe um, these acoustic elements represent a new direction in the musical world. What do you think about it? I mean, I think it just, it just goes back to us being a diverse group of misfits. You know, musical misfits. It's it's boring to play the same thing over and over again all the time. And uh, you know, I can't speak for every member of Guar, but I just want to put out material all the time. You know, I don't mm -hmm. I don't think it's cool to have to wait two, three, four, or five years in between full length records. You know, I, I kind of like honestly, I like what other artists are doing, like Cardi B, which is just releasing singles all the time. Okay, you know, it's like why wait. Why well, wait for full length? But you know what? That's what the people writing the checks want us to do. So oh, I'll yeah. just have to wait for the next record. But oh yes, yes, yes. I think. But I'm going to take all the credit for the disc of no name, 100. Okay. You know, but just because I don't, that wouldn't have happened unless you know, because the the, the the electricity is in my name, so. If I would have paid the bill and we would have had power, we would have never played acoustically. So, <laughs> so I'm kind of responsible for, for all of it. Oh, yeah, definitely. And we know all the tracks in DCP are world classics. And, but world has 14 studio albums, Postal Maximus. I want to know, how was the selection, of, the selection process of the songs? Was it easy? Well, you know, it started... The, the acoustic thing started with fuck this place and I just was sitting around fucking around with it playing it in different styles and then we kind of came up with the the instrumental version just kind of sounded you know like gypsy folk tunes or something like that and I thought it was really cool and once we jammed on that I was like well we have to do more we should do more of this stuff mm -hmm. so it was uh It was a logical choice to pick, um, you know, Monster, because uh, Lothar and I have performed that by ourselves at another venue, which probably only a hundred people ever saw, but it was just guitar and him singing, and so we wanted to try and revisit that one as well. So that was like two newer cuts, and the old ones that were revisited, uh, Road Behind, uh, many people might not know, mm -hmm. but... Um, Before Beefcake the Mighty transitioned into Blothar, um, he actually wrote The Road Behind. So it only seemed appropriate for him to do that. And then uh, Gonna Kill You, that's just, I always thought that was an amazing performance by our great fallen leader, Odorous Urungus. 
and I thought it would be very cool to stylistically revisit that one, and we'll just do something with a little twist differently. Oh, okay, okay. I think this EP has four songs, correct? Just four songs, mm -hmm. four tracks. Correct. Um, can we say this EP is like a test to see how is the reaction of the fans with an acoustic EP, with acoustic versions? No, not necessarily. You know, it was it was really just because it was something we put together organically. Okay. It happened pretty fast. Like, Sweet. it was something we didn't really... Um, it was not... We didn't start playing the songs with the intent of putting out an EP. Okay. But once we had... Once we had performed them all and recorded everything, it was like, well, why not just release this? It's already done. You know, why why wait? And uh, I think, and as a collector, I think picture discs are really cool. So oh, it was definitely it was it, it was really just a cool one off project. You know, it I, I like the art that came with it. I like the songs. It's different. It stands alone as its own thing. You know, and. Uh, The disc with no name is uh, obviously a, a tribute to the man with no name. Uh, some of the great spaghetti westerns of uh, the seventies and eighties and nineties. Mm, uh, okay, you know, okay, yes, yeah, yes. You have some, you have some uh, scenes of a uh, old movie in your video clip. I think this is in fuck this place. Am I correct? And I watched the yeah. video clip. Yes. Are you talking about that movie? But not that movie specifically, but yeah. I think the movie that we used was probably just uh, one that didn't have a copyright on it. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, okay, uh, well, yeah, you know, I, I know always, that. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. My, my uh, uh, wait a minute, what's the movie I like? It's the one where they burn the town of Lago down. Um, oh, I'll remember in a second. Okay. Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. When he... When he burns the town of Lago to the ground. No, High Plains Drifter. High Plains Drifter. Okay. That's, that's, that's the one that was that was in my mind when we were doing some of these tunes. You oh, know, okay, and, okay. And I would like to do something that even kind of further embodies that. But, you know, maybe that's a project that's not for Guar. Oh, okay, okay. You know. Okay, okay. But we, you know, mm, okay, first okay. Is, Yeah, I, I dressed as John Wayne for Halloween one time. Ah, oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I got a big old cowboy hat and gigantic cowboy boots. It's amazing. It's amazing. Postulus, are you working on the new record? I'm working on a 12-pack of beer right now. <laughs> nice. But, um, but yeah, we're, we're working on a record. We're uh, Tell me. I mean, we're pretty much just in the middle of it right now. And, you know, of course, we write a bunch of songs that that we think okay. are masterpieces. And of course, we get a producer in there that tells us they're no good. So, you know, we killed him. We brought in another producer who told us their songs need work. We killed him. And then management was like, guys, you got to stop killing these producers. So now we have a guy come in with, there's a piece of uh, bulletproof glass in between <laughs> us in the studio. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, then he, then, he, then he passes judgment on our songs and, You know, he says if we do a good job, he'll give us, you know, some money so we can go out and cop for drugs and that sort of thing. So it's, <laughs> it's working out. It's almost there. Okay, okay, okay. I know you have been part of war um, since Battle Maximus in 2013. What are the big experiences you have with war? Oh, it's been wonderful. Got to watch, watch my friend die and, you know, watch members come and go. Mm -hmm. It's been an amazing experience, you know, but, you know, and I actually joined in the summer of 2012, but, okay. you know, we're just putting hairs here. So, um, I mean, it's been a wild ride, you know, it's almost been 10 years at this point, still the new guy, even though, you know, I've hired and fired many people among the years, uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I mean, what other band would let you just go out and recklessly endanger the lives of millions on tour? Of course. Other than this. Sure. We don't have to follow the rules. No. You know, I don't even have a driver's license. It, it's a great time to be alive and playing guitar for Guar. Okay, okay. Tell me, do you remember the first time did you wear the custom of your character in war of Pustulus Maximus 
How was that sensation? Do you remember that sensation, Postulus? Uh, the sensation. The first it time. Was a, it was like a, it was a, a burning, burning when urinating was the sensation I remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. It's easy to wear a, the custom on on a concert, two hours at least. We don't, we know, I don't. We don't, Guar, nobody in Guar wears costumes. You know, these are, this is just our natural look. I know. You know what I wear, what I wear on stage is the same thing I wear to church on Sunday when I'm vandalizing it. <laughs> okay, okay. Any concerts on the way, Postulus? We have some Canadian dates too, if they'll let us in the border. Come back to Toronto. Toronto, Toronto is a great city for Guar. Toronto, oh. I love it. Ah, yeah, people love you in Toronto. I mean, yeah, Toronto is great. Vancouver is not great. Why? Because the last time I was there, I tried to buy cocaine from a guy posing <laughs> as a Domino's delivery driver, and he sold me a packet of sugar instead. <laughs> but then, don't trust him. Then I went to Vancouver. Then I went to the strip. Then I went to the strip club to buy more cocaine. And instead, they sold me methamphetamine, so I was up for like fucking five days. Oh It was my terrible. god! Oh my god! Where can we get your EP, Postulus? Uh, you can you can buy the EP from Guar.net. Uh, you can I think Consequence of Sound might be selling some. Uh, there's a few local select record stores that have them, so I would call your local vinyl record shop and see if they can get it or if they have it. If not. You You can buy it from me behind the alley at the show. You know, I'll sell it to you for a good discount. Excellent. Any last words in this interview? No. 